What's up guys, welcome. So today I wanna to walk you through a website that I really like and I wanna show you some things this guy here, his name is Jeff Sanders, I wanna show you some things Jeff is doing on his new website that uh, are, are strategies and tactics that you will want to emulate if you wanna get better results and better, better visitor interaction on your own website, all right? So uh, let's dive into this thing. We'll take a look at what Jeff is doing that is so effective. All right, so the first thing, uh, we'll, we'll just scroll through his homepage here. He's got a new homepage, and I, I wanna point out, so he's got a, a centralized navigation unit at the top. He's got a nice uh, headline, eye-catching image here with a little call to action. Uh, that's simple to process. He's, there's not a lot of information density there. Uh, and as we go down the page, you'll notice that there's just a centered column of text some little sections, section breaks. He's got a, a background color separator here to kind of introduce a new section, change the mood a little bit. Uh, another clearly delineated section, you know, eye-catching images, not too much text. Very, you can tell what everything is. So like this is an introduction. This is an uh, introduction to his podcast. So it's introduction to him, the person. So we got a call to action, introduction to who he is, introduction to his podcast, introduction to his book, uh, an introduction to the fact that he is a speaker, and then introduction to a uh, premium upgrade that he offers, and then finally an invitation to join his email list at the bottom, followed by a pretty typical website footer, uh, Although it's worth even noting here that you, you see a lot of footers with a lot of dense information, uh, links presented in columns, stuff that nobody's ever really going to be looking through uh, or, or clicking on for that matter. So th this is a nice um, departure from that, uh, from that pattern that we so often see. This is a much simpler footer. There's not much here to digest. Links to his socials. Everybody knows what those icons are. A couple, couple links to uh, you know random legal stuff, privacy policy, things like that. But uh, what's really cool about this, he's got this centralized, you know, this centered column of text, and he doesn't present multiple columns of text. So he is, he is maintaining a vertical flow of the information on this page. And like I said, he's using these very uh, clear uh, section separators to, you know, introduce the different uh, big topics that he covers here on the homepage. So... This is a departure from what we typically see because two and three column designs have, have dominated the internet for so long. This is what we are accustomed to seeing, but what we find out when we actually analyze how people use websites and what gets result, we find out that a singular top-down flow that leads directly to calls to action produces much greater results. But it also pr it produces better results because it produces better engagement with the audience. The reason this type of... Uh, presentation is more engaging and works better is because you are asking the user to consider fewer things. You're just sending them right down the page, you know, here's some text, read it, click on this link or don't, or you know, the only other option you have is to keep going or leave. There's not a lot of visual distraction, the user isn't moving left and right and considering this option versus that option, there's nothing to consider here. It's just pure consumption. Consume this content, react to it, or leave. And those are really, you know, it sounds harsh, but those are really the questions you want to pose to your the visitors to your website. But now I'm going to go into the, some, some of the specifics of what Jeff is doing here that I really like and I think you should copy on your site. So the first and probably my favorite topic right now is just general website navigation. It's so critical to get your navigation right because your navigation is pre presenting options to your visitors. And so if you are presenting your visitors with options that force them to think, you're going to exhaust their mental capacity. They're not going to be digging through your content. They're not going to be engaging with you. They're just going to be kind of thinking about this. What do I do next? And then I'll click away because it's too much effort. But if we dig into any one of these links, we'll go to his about link, we see that the navigation has been replaced, the what we typically would call this universal navigation. And we would call it universal navigation because this appears on every page of a website. That's the uh, pattern that we have seen for many years. I am here to suggest that that pattern doesn't work very well. 
This is what, what I'm about to show you is going to work a lot better. So he's replacing his navigation menu on an interior page, his about page, with a breadcrumbs menu that only offers a trip back to the home page. Now when a user's on this page, there's nothing to consider up here. It's just a simple breadcrumb trail. It's a linear pathway. People are very good at understanding the nature of linear pathways and how they work. So a user will see this, realize it's a breadcrumb trail, not think anything else about it, and will immediately start consuming the information on this page. And once again, Jeff has a centered column of text. He's leading the user straight down the page. He's not, he's not trying to uh, fill up the ho available horizontal space here. Just, to, uh, just because he feels compelled to create a high visual density, uh, that doesn't work well for users, so he would be shooting himself in the foot if he were to do that. But he is, he is practicing restraint, not trying to fill up horizontal real estate just because it's there, and he's sending the visitor on a very calculated journey down the page. And the links he offers, all this stuff promotes what he wants to achieve. So all this stuff is working for him. So it's a smart way to construct your pages. And like I said, so he's, he's replaced the navigation with a very simple structure that doesn't ask anything of the user. It's very smart. So now we'll dig into a different link, though, and see uh, something a little bit more robust. So we go into the podcast page, and this is a tactic that I absolutely love. I'm using this now on all of my sites. I think you should do this, too. Check this out. So on this particular page about his podcast, he has a supplemental navigation menu that is extremely pertinent to this page. So it's not universal navigation that could be relevant everywhere, sort of, just because you want to link to your best stuff. No, this is navigation that is curated for exactly where the user is right now. These links are relevant to his podcast, and that's why they, they are presented here on this page. And this is such a good strategy uh, because, because People don't always enter your site on the home page and then go through the very clearly defined link journeys you have set up for them. Oftentimes people will come to your site via direct links from social media or from emails that you may send out, from recommendations from others, that type of thing. So if a user were dropped onto your site right here, they would be able to see that, oh, I'm on the podcast page, here's a breadcrumb to trail to the home page, and everything else I see on this page is relevant specifically to this page. So if a user's just dropped in here, they're not seeing a bunch of stuff that's not relevant to this page. They're not uh, getting receiving suggestions from your navigation unit to go to other pages of your site. They are encouraged to focus on exactly what is presented on this page. And if you have good pages, pages that get results, pages that uh, have very specific calls to action, pages that are designed to do specific things, this type of arrangement is going to make those pages more successful. Uh, I, let me show you another example of uh, this type of nav navigation. So on my new plugins website, DIYplugins.com, I do a similar thing. So I have my universal navigation menu, which only includes the most important links. And then if you go into any one of these, such as for the YouTube performance plugin, the main navigation unit is replaced with a breadcrumb trail. And here we see navigation that's only relevant to this page. It's great. Uh, we can even drill down even further. We go into the into the documentation and we see that there is no navigation links here. This is just straight up consumption. And I may actually add some navigation links to uh, to help people navigate this page even more effectively. But you see, this is a much more curated way to present to handle your navigation, present it to users, and it's super intuitive. Like it doesn't take. I don't need uh, a lot of priming to understand how this works. I just know that what I see. It's all relevant, completely relevant to this page. This is going to make each page more effective. Go to pricing. We can go to how it works. We can go to the facts section, or we can hop over the docs like we already saw. So anyway, back to Jeff's site. Let's look at a couple other links here. He's got his books page. He just goes straight into the books. There's no navigation. That's probably the smartest way to do that. This is a short page. Not a lot here to consume. I love the way he set this up. And then we've got a speaking page, and he's got relevant links for his speaking stuff. And then he's got some supplemental information. But everything here is you know, crafted in a way that promotes 
the goal of the page. And that's that's the really the thing here that I want you to take away from this whole presentation. But I, I do want to point out a couple more things uh, that you can use on your site as well that will uh, you know make your pages more effective. So Jeff has a big video here on this page. Uh, it's a YouTube video. Including YouTube videos is great. People love videos, especially presenting them in a big, you know, in a big way like this. This is enticing to click on. I assume that a, a lot of people that come to this page are going to watch this video, or at least begin watching this video. The problem with putting YouTube videos on pages is that they will slow down the loading times of the page by about a second and a half. Uh, if, if the video wasn't there, the page would be a second and a half faster than it would be if you add the video. That's not great. Uh, that's definitely not ideal. And another facet of this that makes it not ideal is that not everyone who visits a page that includes a video is going to watch the video. And so therefore, and in fact, we know it's like less than half. So in, in almost every case, and in most cases, it's you know, closer to like 18%. But, and so with that information in mind, you have to ask yourself, does it really make sense to load up all of the assets to serve a video for every user when only a very small fraction of the visitors to this page are actually going to be watching the are actually going to watch the video the answer of course is that it does not make sense to load up those resources for everybody especially somebody who's visiting and browsing on a mobile device uh, with limited data connection that type of thing you're forcing them to chew up more data for something they're probably not even going to use it's just not great it's not the most efficient way to deliver it it would be better if we could deliver this video on demand only when a user signify, you know, signals intent and you, know, you signal intent by clicking on something, say, hey, I want to watch this. So I clicked on that. That loaded the video on demand. And so the way this works, he's using something called the YouTube box for, uh, for, for thesis and focus. Uh, it's a little add-on that does this, but I just showed you the YouTube performance plugin. This is so you can achieve this exact same functionality on any, type, any WordPress website. So you don't have to be running thesis or focus to be able to do this same kind of thing. But the bottom line is Jeff has saved resources and loaded up the video in this placeholder manner. And then if a user wants to watch it, they click on this and the video loads on demand. That's a great way to do it. So we'll flip back over to his homepage and he has a video on his homepage doing the same thing. It's down here, same video. So he's using that YouTube box to make his homepage as fast as it can possibly be while still delivering, you know, a thing that is very enticing to click on. He's still, he's still got the video on here. He's just not forcing every user to download all that data and chew up those resources to get it. So that's pretty smart. That's great. Uh, I've, I've already highlighted these section breaks here. These are really, really, this is a great way to break up your pages and uh, you, you keep the the vertical flow happening, but you also give these visual cues like, hey, this is a new topic in this section because we've got this section break. So this is a, you know, you're going to see this on so many, so many web pages now. This is sort of like a, uh, a dominant design pattern. And I just want to point out, Jeff built his whole site himself using the Focus WordPress theme. Focus includes a feature called the full full width layout bleed is what this is. It's called a bleed because it actually breaks out of the, the column of content. I'll show you. So here is the column of content. Right here, it's highlighted. And the bleed actually busts out of that column of content. Here's the bleed. You can see how the bleed goes all the way to the edges of the browser. It's, that's just a you know, the name is called a bleed because it bleeds outside the edges of the content, goes all the way to the edges of the screen. But it, the, what it enables you to do is to create these full width sections to clearly delineate, you know, where you're going to have new ideas, where you're going to introduce new topics, that type of thing. This stuff is super easy to do with Focus. I have tons of videos showing you how to do this. Jeff used my videos and the tools in Focus to create this page and to set it up this way. And he didn't need to hire somebody to do this. You know, he achieved a very professional result, a very professional and effective. It's one thing to hire a professional. It's another thing to have that professional actually deliver a result that works. Uh, and, and that is what Jeff has been able to do without the help of hiring anybody. He's been able to do that just using the Focus WordPress theme. Uh, I think that is remarkable. This is a very effective web page. He has done very specific things that I think you should copy. Very simple, obvious calls to action vertical top-down flow, not filling up available horizontal real estate just, just because he's got this compulsion to fill in that space. 
It's a natural human tendency to want to use available real estate, but you always have to balance your desires with what people, visitors to your website, will actually consume because that is what helps you get results. So all of this stuff Jeff was able to do with the Focus WordPress theme, with some of those extra tools like the YouTube performance plugin that I showed you. Uh, and he's also given this careful treatment to navigation, which makes, which ensures that visitors, no matter where they drop on his site, they will be focused on the things that he wants them to focus on. So that's just, uh, there's real ninja stuff for crafting the user experience, holding the user's hand as you take them through the website, keeping them on task, so that they can take actions that benefit you and ideally benefit themselves. That's the whole point of your value proposition on your website. But uh, I wanted to walk you through that. I think Jeff's doing some really good stuff here. I love that he was able to use the Focus WordPress theme to achieve this outcome without having to pay high dollars to a consultant or anything else. And uh, you know, you can do this too. That's what I'm showing you. You can use these tools to achieve similar outcomes. You can craft your pages in the same way. You can consider your users in the same uh, you know, compassionate, um, thoughtful type of way. And you can win with your website with these tools, all right? Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.